Last time on Cannon Fodder, Grim Brother One, the creator of Cannon Fodder, had decided to step down, moving on to new projects and responsibilities. In his stead, former community member Harspus has been selected to take up this mantle of responsibility. The diligent wordsmith had already begun writing community updates to great success. Now, with the power of true lore flowing through his fingertips, Harspus delivers the vital knowledge his fellow Halo scholars need to survive. Today on Cannon Fodder. But seriously, welcome back, Cannonites, for the first Cannon Fodder of 2022. Now authored by Alex Wakeford, congrats again, this first issue dives into some familiar and new topics, answers some community questions, and leaves plenty for fans to be excited about in 2022. So, Let's dive in. Starting things out, this issue opens with some recommendations that fans can sink their teeth into right now, such as the Holiday 2021 stream from the end of last year, the Memory Agent audio drama, a fantastic series if you haven't listened already, and the book The Art of Halo Infinite, which comes in standard and deluxe editions. It's always good, too, to keep in mind that concept art isn't always reflective of the final product or isn't strictly reflective of cut content or stuff fans are missing out on or anything. That said, the art book is gorgeous, a must-have for any dedicated Halo fan. From there, the article dives into some details on what we can expect as far as Halo literature for this year. And the first thing for fans to keep an eye out for is the Halo Encyclopedia, currently slated for release on March 29th. The Encyclopedia has its own deluxe edition, which can also be pre-ordered now. After that, we get some additional details on the upcoming Halo Rubicon Protocol book from author Kelly Gay. Originally slated for a March release date, it's now set to drop on June 28th. Set during the six months Master Chief was floating in space, the book will follow a team of Spartan Fours enacting the titular Protocol. As revealed in Halo Infinite's audio logs, the Protocol stated that Spartans were to Stop or slow the banished by any means necessary. And keep Zeta Halo out of their control. Buy Earth as much time as we can. That's our mission now. Beyond that, we don't have a lot of details just yet, Though the article does confirm that Spartans Stone and Kovan are on the back cover, with Spartan Horvath featured on the front. Given that, I'm starting to think that Horvath may be our main character, and I'm curious just how much of the story overlaps with the audio logs. Like, are we going to see more detailed versions of the Spartan audio log events, or might we flash back to those with the main story being sometime later? Ultimately, though, I'm excited. And to keep that excitement going, Harspis confirms that another Troy Denning book is in the works. It will, according to the article, return fans to a previous location from Troy's books, and will be told through, quote, familiar eyes. My first guess is that we'd see a continuation of Halo Divine Wind, but I'd love if we were returning to Gao and following up on those children Blue Team rescued from Netherop. If we're getting a proper follow-up to Halo Oblivion, well... <laughs> As much as I like the ferrets, I do want to see the plot threads from Oblivion followed up on. Whatever's coming, though, I'm excited. I will say, however, I hope this year isn't another year of just books from Troy Denning and Kelly Gay. I love both of these authors, do not get me wrong, but I do miss some of the variety we were seeing in the mid-2010s. I've said before, and I'll say again, I'd love to see John Shirley take another crack at Halo. Moving on, Cannon Fodder next shows a couple of ships that didn't quite make the cut for the already packed Halo Encyclopedia. These are the Schulte-class Missile Corvette and the Lancer-class Fast Attack Corvette. The Schulte-class Corvette, manufactured by Tansec B, was originally released as a classified state-of-the-art frigate, replacing older Osa and Akita-class vessels. A linchpin for fleets under the command of the Colonial Military Administration, or CMA, during the insurrection conflict that preceded the Human Covenant War, the Schulte-class frigate would eventually be overshadowed by larger vessels and reclassified as a corvette. Still, the Schulte-class remained a ship that could punch far above its tonnage. By the mid-26th century, the Schulte-class corvette was largely relegated to serving as training vessels for Navy recruits. Nevertheless, it retained a reputation as reliable and heavily armed, featuring an M50 Guard Dog autocannon turret, two M58 Archer missile pods, two M44 Ares missile pods, and four M870 Rampart Point defense guns. Even if its boost speed and limited slipspace capability kept these vessels out of action until the final months of the Covenant War. The Lancer-class Corvette, a fast attack vessel, is another older model ship. 
Manufactured by Kushan Shipyards, the Lancer was the fastest warship available to the CMA or UNSC at the time of its introduction. The Lancer-class corvettes were often overgunned and underranged during the time of the insurrection, but found new life after the opening engagements of the Human Covenant War. Against the Covenant, Lancer-class corvettes could be used to harass large ships from afar and eliminate small vessels before they could become a threat. However, limited storage and fuel space meant they couldn't engage for long. As such, Lancers were largely regulated to internal patrols and planetary defense duties. Others were even stripped of their slipspace drives to make room for additional ammo and crew comforts. The Lancer-class Corvette is equipped with a 5D7C2 magnetic accelerator cannon, six LNT-450 naval coil guns, and four M390 Streak II point defense missile pods. It's great to get some information on new ships, and it makes me all the more hopeful for what we'll see in the encyclopedia. Next up, Harispis continues the map Teculor section from the last cannon fodder issue, this time featuring the maps Fragmentation, Behemoth, and Aquarius. Fragmentation, it's revealed, was where members of the 511th Infantry Division landed after evacuating the Infinity. Not long after, they felt their world literally fragment itself and transport them to a new part of space. Those still alive now survey their surroundings and fight off hostile Sentinel patrols while avoiding the banished and hoping to connect with other UNSC forces on the ring. The extended description for Behemoth doesn't add much to what we already knew for the map. For those who might not recall, Behemoth is set on one of Zeta Halo's tectonic fabrication seams. Details on these, it seems, will have to continue to wait. Finally, we have Aquarius. Owned by Aquarius Terraforming Solutions, this facility is just one of many owned by the corporate giant. In addition to development of new crops, other divisions support critical infrastructure, ecological management, and more, all to meet the variety of demands in colonial life. A leader in their industry, Aquarius was a prime candidate for restoration projects on Reach prior to the created uprising, favored over the Liang Dortmund Corporation, which often demanded territorial and resource concessions. While acceptable for distant colonies like Meridian, Liang Dortmund's demands would prove politically problematic when it came to Reach. As I noted last time, I definitely enjoy these deeper dives into map lore. I just wish this stuff was in the game. Wrapping up his first issue of Cannon Fodder, Harrismus goes out with a bang, answering a number of questions posed by the community over on our Halo story. Check that out if you don't already. Starting things out, MintPrince8219 asks what the best way to get into Halo lore would be. Harspis pretty much gives the answer I would, which is recommending Halo The Fall of Reach first, then noting that there are plenty of other books, comics, and other media, usually pretty welcoming to fans. I actually made a video that dives into this subject to a degree not too long ago. Next, Mending Mercy asks about the symbols on the veins extending from Eshram's chest piece. Seems these are a pictographic retelling of the Banished Origins. CIA391 then asks which Spartans are featured on the cover of Halo Ghosts of Onyx. This question has a bit of history to it, so let me lay that out before we get to the answer. Around the time of Ghosts of Onyx release, the Spartans on the cover were generally believed to be Kelly 087 in the Mark V armor, Kurt 051 in the Spy armor, and Fred 104 in Mark VI. Starting in 2014, however, new canon showed that Fred received new armor upon arriving at Earth in October 2552, just like John 117. Though designated as Mark VI, this new armor was virtually identical to the Gen 2 Centurion Mjolnir that Fred would wear in the future. So, with that little retcon, Fred couldn't be the Spartan in Mark VI on the cover of Ghosts of Onyx. Myself, CIA391, and others have since theorized that the Spartan in default Mark VI could be Will 043, a Spartan II featured in the story who would have had the opportunity to be outfitted with such armor. I've made a deeper theory on Will and his armor, which should be appearing at the top right of the window right about now, but I digress. That history laid out, Alex confirms that Kelly and Kurt are wearing Mark V and Spy armors respectively, but leaves the identity of the Mark VI Spartan unstated, though he does tease the aforementioned Will-Fred history I mentioned. This arguably hints at Will being the Spartan pictured, why else bring that up at all, but it's important to keep in mind that things are always subject to change. A big reason 343 doesn't outright confirm things at times is to avoid writing themselves into a corner or into a situation where heavy retcons would be necessary. From there, Tom Jurassic asks whether the Bumblebee escape pods seen in Halo Infinite, remarkably close to those seen in Halo CE, are the same model of escape pod or something newer. We're told they're a newer model, though sadly the exact one goes unmentioned. 
Next up, Henry Badger 19 asks about the names of the elite ranks seen in Halo Infinite, and Alex goes on to confirm something I've been hoping for for a while, the Halo Encyclopedia will address this topic to some degree. He also confirms that the purple armored Spec Ops elites in Halo Infinite are indeed Spec Ops elites. I guess there's been some confusion since they're tagged differently in the game files. Anyway, Natarazil next asks who, in-universe, designed the Mulsane class frigate, the new frigate class introduced in Halo Infinite. The Mulsane frigate was designed by Bernard Christensen and Jacques Thomas, and manufactured by Synoviet Heavy Machinery, who manufacture the Paris and Stalwart class frigates as well. Next up, Sam the Fro asks an interesting question that might go over a few heads. Quote, any status on that cryopod floating around in space that has a man and his three-legged dog in it? This is referring to Oliver Birch and his three-legged dog, Mabel. They appear in the short story Tug of War, a bonus story included in the 2010 and Onward Prince of Halo First Strike. Birch was a fetcher, a type of salvager specifically paid to recover slipspace drives from human Covenant War debris fields. During a job, he finds an experimental slipspace drive and tries to use it to finish his work early and make a date on time. Things go bad, leaving Oliver and Mabel floating somewhere in space in a cryopod. And for now, that's how things will remain. Next up, we have the question from Polter Chief, which I'm again just going to read out loud. What about Craig? We know he had a tour through Zeta Halo, but he forgot his instrument. Does he have a new one? What inspired him to write? Grunt, grunt, grunt. And does he have a plan to make an unplugged concert? This is, of course, referencing the Craig Zeta Halo tour Easter egg atop Chak Loke's tower. My tower. I recommend reading the full answer, but I particularly wanted to highlight Alex's answer about the Grunt 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 song, which seems to be one of Craig's first forays into post-flip groovecore music. This references flip music, the music Sergeant Johnson annoys his marines with in Halo CE. From there, Mr. Evil 37 asks if the Chief's armor kept him alive for six months and whether he was hungry when he woke up, to which the answers are yes. And finally, the article closes with a question from Sid Saber, asking where the planet Zeta Halo orbits is. As revealed in Halo Infinite's audio logs, the ring was moved from its original location. The planet it originally orbited, by the way, was known as FSU-1. And that does it for this first cannon fodder of 2022. It was a fun one to be sure, a mix of topics and fairly laid back. I would have loved more Q&A, but we know how that goes. Besides, with the encyclopedia on its way, I can only imagine the task of balancing what to do with cannon fodder while awaiting the encyclopedia's release. It's an unenviable position. Alex did a fantastic job with his first cannon fodder, and I look forward to future articles from him. Congratulations once again, my friend. And of course, for those watching, let me know what your thoughts were in the comments below. Thank you for watching as always. Stick around for the Patreon shoutouts. And until next time, this has been Halo Cannon. First, I'd like to give a big thank you to our Horospice patrons. First, there's Hope, then we have Freight, Discombobulated Sycophant, Justin Montgomery, Man in the Dark, Keisha Dila, Daddy Anarchy, Great Scott Productions, Jumpy Sucks Balls, Ever Corrado, and Embezzled True 1010. Thank you all for your amazing support of the channel. Next, I'd like to thank our theoretical patrons. If you'd like to see your name here or get a direct shout out, check out patreon.com slash halo cannon. You can simply support the channel or get additional benefits such as behind the scenes materials, including raw audio for upcoming videos, or even shout outs like this. All patrons now get early access to certain videos as well, and your Patreon title will appear in the Halo Cannon Discord. However, your continued viewership is more than enough for me. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and maybe even subscribing to the channel if you aren't already. If you really enjoy my stuff, turn on that notification bell so you can be among the first to see new videos when they release. But for all my fellow Canonites, keep 